Greetings, this is J. Peter Berzizi, and in this lesson we're going to discuss how to configure Layer 4 virtual services. Okay, so let's get started. So for starters, you see that we are in our Loadmaster web user interface, and under Virtual Services, there's an option there, Add New. So you can see we don't have Virtual Services currently configured. Let's click the Add New option. Or you can click the button up in the top corner here. So we have to provide a virtual IP address. We're going to configure that. For this demonstration, we'll leave it at port 80, and we'll leave it as the protocol TCP. So we have the IP address 10.0.0.17. Then we'll click Add This Virtual Service. As you can see, there are quite a number of different properties and options you can configure, different checkboxes you can turn on or off. So for starters, you'll note that this is currently operating at Layer 7. And that's because as you look at standard options, you can see that it forces Layer 7 because that checkbox is enabled. You can also see that transparency is enabled by default as well. So let's make a few changes to the setup here. So for starters, let's actually start working from layer 4 and we'll work our way up from there. So in order to switch this to layer 4 virtual services, we're going to deselect the option force L7. And now you can see up at the top that it says operating at layer 4. So at this point we're at layer 4 and you can see that the transparency is enabled and there is no way to deselect that because again at layer 4 transparency is automatically enabled by default there's no way to turn that off so at this point let's scroll down and let's add a couple of servers to our virtual service we click add new under real servers and we have to provide the real server IP addresses. So the real server IP address that we're going to use here is 10.0.0.21. Now the next part of this we want to talk about is the forwarding method. You can see that it's currently configured for NAT. If we select the drop down, we also have the ability to use either NAT or direct return. So if your server is configured for direct server return, then you want to make sure when you set up the virtual services that you configure it to use direct return here. So it's good to note then at this point that even though you're configuring this with NAT, the server will still be able to see the client IP address. So we leave it as NAT and we click add this real server. And we get the message back that the server was added. We click OK and we see it there. So at this point we have the virtual service we can add more servers as needed but at this point we're good we'll go back to the virtual service itself. So we hope you found this informative thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next lesson.